Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to another Wild Rift video and in today's video I will finally be playing Darius. Darius is my most played champion and he's not as good as he used to be anymore but he's definitely still really really strong if you build him properly, if you play him properly and just like you can completely destroy the enemy with Darius. But before getting into the video I quickly want to say um, yeah, follow my uh, TikTok I will be posting some stuff there, whoever knows. You can find links in the description and top comments. It's likely not going to be Wild Rift related. Um, so if you're interested in me and not only this, the, 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 the Wild Rift thing, you can follow me there, right? And on Instagram and other things like that. Enough about that. Let's now get into the build part of the video. By the way, timestamps in the description to skip to the gameplay immediately. So, okay. Let me tell you immediately, there is there are many different builds that you can go for on Darius um let's see actually i have the same build everywhere <laughs> so let me explain this is the the like the damage build this is the build that's going to give you the most damage um i'm quickly going to explain to you how you can basically build it the basic thing about this build is you go for trinity force and then steric gauge i'll talk more about the last items later but let me quickly tell you the different types of builds so this build where you go for trinity force steric gauge um, this is like the build where you want to completely solo carry the game um you are going to be pretty squishy with this build I mean, you're not going to be super squishy because as you can see, you get 200 max health and 400 from this one. But still, you are like you can get blown up with this build. Enemies can really blow you up because you don't really have any defense. So let me get to the next build, which is the full defensive build where you go for uh, Sunfire Ages. Oh, sorry. Where you go for a uh, Sunfire Ages and then a Thormill. And then after that, you go full tank, full tank items, literally just full tank. This is what I like to call the armor build and uh, this build is basically where you just build all armor items uh, it's this build is going to be really good um, where you just go for full armor with the sunfire ages obviously if the enemy has five attack damage champions if they have any ability power i really don't recommend the tanky build because the tanky build really lacks a lot of damage so the tankiness definitely makes up to it for it but only if the enemy is full attack damage so the next build, there is another build, which is a black cleaver, and then you can go for, uh, where is it, Starx Gauge, or some other item. You can. So let me tell you about this build. Um, this build deals a little less damage than the Trinity Force build. This build is going to be harder to stack up your passive. However, what this build is going to allow you to do is going to allow you to shred through tanks. It's incredibly powerful, as I said, in 1v1s against tanks. And... Um, I mean, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. It allows you to shred tanks. That's really it. That's the whole point of getting this, this item. And um, it also makes you very fast because you get the passive from this item. But basically, Trinity Force is generally better because it gives you all, almost all of the things and more damage and more attack speed. It's just like Black Cleaver gives you more attack damage. So one, like your combo is going to hurt the enemy a bit more, right? Basic attack, second ability, and then your first ability. That combo is going to hurt the enemy more. But as I said, in the long term, you're going to be dealing less damage. In the short term, you're just going to be able to shred their armor and do a lot of damage. But as I said, I really prefer this build, the Trinity Force. So now let's talk about the item after this. Um, so with the Trinity Force, you get the Starx Gauge. And for your boots, it depends. Mercury Threads or Plated Steel Caps. These are really the only boots that I go for on Darius. Um, because, yeah... You either want to have tenacity if the enemy has a lot of stuns, charms, roots, and like really get Mercury threats if they do, because otherwise you're going to be useless. This is very important. If the enemies don't have a lot of stuns and things like that, you could get plated steel caps. I mean, you could even get glutinous griefs if you feel like you're not going to die and you just want to continue to fight and fight and fight. But I don't really recommend the glutinous griefs. So for your third item, it's completely situational. Let me tell you. Um, if you want more movement speed, you basically just get a Deadman's Plate. Unless the enemy has a lot of ability power, then you can get the Force of Nature here. But Deadman's Plate is better because it also allows you to deal bonus damage when you get 100 stacks of the uh, Deadman's Plate, right? You're going to be dealing bonus damage and you're going to slow the enemy. This is incredibly powerful, guys. So Deadman's Plate is a really, really good item on Darius as your third item, I would say. If the enemy has a lot of burst damage... Um, Death Dance, I don't, I, even though I have it here, I never really go for it as my third item because um, you do want to have some armor or some magic resist, but especially armor. Um, you like you already have two damage items, so getting a defensive item is really necessary on Darius. Guardian Angel is also good as your third item because it does give you damage 
but it also gives you the 40 armor and of course the guardian angel really really good so if the enemy has a lot of bursts you get the death stance as your fourth item not earlier it's really it's really i feel like it's not worth it on darius to get it earlier just get it as your fourth item really and as your fifth item also defense and if you don't need the death stance get another defensive item like you can get frozen heart for example random its omen if they have a lot of crit you can get a lot really like you, there, there are so many different choices you can even get abyssal mask if your team has a lot of ability power to deal to the enemy there's just so much to get so just just look at what you need and get it um oh about the enchantments let's see real quick so there's a few enchantments that are good on, on Darius. Stasis, I don't like stasis, but it could be good if the enemy has like a Fizz or a Zet or something, to, so you can use stasis against them. Protobelt is really good to catch out an enemy. Boom, use a Protobelt, then your third ability, you can catch them out. This one is my favorite, Glorious Enchant. It gives you a lot of bonus movement speed when moving towards an enemy, and you're gonna slow them a lot when you get close to them. Teleport boots are also really really good and this is optional this depends on your playstyle if you feel like you need the teleport boots and you want to split push or if you if you really feel like you need the teleport boots uh, because your team is doing a quick dragon so you want to boom quickly teleport to them then you get the teleport boots but generally I would say glorious enchant this one is mo most often the best one um, for the for the ruins conqueror you can also get fleet footwork if you are against a rough matchup click on it Oh, what the hell did I just do? You can also go for fleet footwork if you're against a hard matchup like Akali or uh, maybe Fiora or Teemo. Oh, Teemo is the hardest matchup for Darius, guys. So if you're against a hard matchup, you can get a fleet, fleet, fleet footwork. Otherwise, just stick with the Conqueror. Now, as my second rune, I always, always use Triumph. I see some other people use different runes here, but I have always, always used Triumph here because it's just perfect for Darius because when you do get your passive and you do kill an enemy you're gonna be getting the 10% missing health which is huge on Darius especially when you when you have your passive already it's gonna buy you like one second extra time and that one second allows you to do another basic attack and that's already enough to kill the next enemy and boom you're gonna gain another 10% and on top of that you also deal 3% more damage to enemies below 35% health thus allowing you to execute enemies more effectively with your ultimate so this is this one is perfect on Darius if you don't want to go for triumph you can also go for brutal but guys come on triumph is way better um, for your third for your third rune it depends adaptive carapace is like a safe rune in your lane it's gonna make you very strong in the early game because it gives you 15 health and when you're under 50% health it gives you that uh, 12 armor or 12 magic resist depends on what the enemy the uh, damage deals <clears throat> conditioning I don't like it because it's just useless early game and yeah no Hunter Titan, really, really good because uh, the tenacity is just really necessary on Darius. You really want to be able to run down the enemies and uh, tenacity is going to allow you to do that to, to reduce the stun duration and things like that. Second Wind is good against a hard matchup because this one is going to allow you to heal up after you fought with the enemy. So if the enemy engages on you, you deal some damage to them, you're going to be able to heal up some time. Like as you can see, 3 plus 1.5% of your missing health. It's not a lot, but... It's something, I guess, right? It's definitely not a lot, but it's something. Um, for your fourth rune, Sweet Tooth. Because Sweet Tooth is broken. So for your spells, um, Ignite and Flash is what I like to go. But you can also go for Barrier. If you feel like you want to buy yourself more time with the Barrier, you can even go for Ghost. If you feel like you, you're going to have a hard time to catch out the, or hard time sticking to the enemy, sorry. Like against enemies that are very slippery, like Kha'Zix, uh, Lee Sin maybe. Uh, Fiora, you know, champions like that that can just very easily escape from you. Ghost could be very good. So enough about this. Let's get into the gameplay. And uh, while the game is loading, I'm just gonna show this one more time. I, I don't know what the hell I'm gonna do on TikTok. I like one of my one of my viewers just messaged me and he was like, "Yeah, bro, you should do uh, TikTok." Shout out to you, Vice. And I was like, man, come on, I don't want to do TikTok. But then he really he really told me like, "Yeah, you should do it." And I came up with some ideas and. I'm, 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 I'm gonna post TikTok content. Who would have thought, man? I Like, I just stopped with TikTok because the platform is so stupid, but I'm gonna try it again. But enough about that. Let's not talk about Darius. So, early game Darius. Oh, wait, my screen. Wait, what? Oh, it's zoomed in. Whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. What, what is happening? Is it good now? Yeah, it's good. So, um, early game Darius is 
not as easy to play as it used to be. You have to hit your first ability. Here, I missed my first ability. Look what happens. I get out traded. And this is this is like the basic this is the basic concept of Darius, guys. You miss your third ability, uh, your first ability. I missed it again. You miss your first ability and you just lose the trade. Here, look. I had to barrier, flash to the heal, and get this. Otherwise, I would have died. This is what happens if you miss your first ability in your laning matchup, especially two times in a row. If you miss hitting the enemy on your outer half of the first ability, you are pretty much gonna lose every single matchup. Yeah, you're gonna lose every matchup like that. I even typed it in the game. <laughs> so keep in mind that it's actually very important to that you properly hit your first ability. So let me give you some good tips on how you can actually hit your first ability. So instead of randomly trying to hit your first ability, the first way that you can that you can improve your chances on hitting it is take a look at when the enemy is going to move to take a minion. Especially a cannon minion because they're almost always going to be going for that. So if if the enemy goes for that minion, it's you're going to know where they're going to walk, right? So you can you can pretty much for hit your first ability for free because you're gonna know that they're gonna be approaching the minion and if they don't approach the minion they're gonna lose a minion which is also worth losing your first ability over but you obviously don't want to trade after that but just you know that's how you kind of want to use your first ability another way to use your first ability is after your third ability you use your third ability oh here i hit it finally here see see how much easier it is to trade already with him like, I am behind in this game, but I trade it evenly with him, even though I'm I'm a little behind, because he has a good item. As you can see, hitting that first ability really makes your early game very easy on Darius. So what I was going to say, yeah, you hook them with your third ability, basic attack, and then when you slow them with that second ability, it's literally a free hit on your first ability. You can't even miss it. Uh, so whenever you slow an enemy with your second ability, it is always going to be a free hit with your first ability. Keep that in mind. So I really recommend you, if you can, to hit the enemy on that on that second ability before hitting your first ability. Boom. Oh, yeah. I was going to take that fight because I feel like I could have killed him with the barrier. So in this game, I took a barrier because I'm against a Garen. I felt like barrier was really going to be good against the Garen. Because, yeah, Ignite is not going to help me a lot against the Garen, but Barrier is. Because it, it can take away all his damage from his ultimate. So, Barrier is a really good thing to go for against Garen generally, right? So, Kha'Zix is one of those champions that Darius is so damn good against. Because Kha'Zix is just so squishy, you can kill him so damn easily. Boom! I did all my damage on him and I got the kill. So, um, you really want to pick Darius against the type of champions that cannot hard CC you down. And the type of champions that have a hard time to escape from you. So Garen would be a good one. Gar Garen is a pretty good matchup for Darius. Because you can stick to him quite easily. He cannot stun you, root you, charm you or anything like that. And it's just like going to be a very easy matchup generally. Um, champions like Kha'Zix too. He has no stuns, nothing. He's not going to be able to burst you down. Because you're going to have your Darius. You're not very squishy, right? You can just fight him in a 1v1 situation. So a champion that uh, is hard to deal with when you're playing Darius is... Let me actually think of, of a good example. So Fiora would be a good example. Because Fiora can just poke you hard. Teemo would, be, would probably be the best example. Because Teemo, yeah. <laughs> Teemo is the single hardest matchup for Darius. Ash, yes, the ADC Ash is also one of the hardest matchups for Darius because of that ultimate and the slows that she has. She can just completely deny you from escaping or chasing her with her slows and her ultimate. And just basically those types of champions, guys. The types of champions that can just hard CC you. And yeah, those are not good to play against. So um, I want to talk about Alistar too because this is one of the best matchups for Darius. Because when Darius gets his passive, uh, the passive as in the five, the five marks, of the passive his ultimate is going to be dealing a lot of damage right and it deals true damage so whenever the alistar is at like 40 percent hp and you have your full passive and when alistar uses his ultimate you will still kill him because even though his ultimate reduces damage your ultimate goes right through that because it deals true damage and somehow i did not kill that oriana she definitely used a barrier definitely otherwise she would have been dead for sure and um yeah so about Darius, 
I have like a million videos of Darius, but in this video I actually made a lot of mistakes and that's why I actually chose to upload it because I don't just want to upload videos of me stomp completely stomping the enemy because um, all my other Darius videos, it's really like, you know, I just get quadra kill, penta kills and you know, that's all, that's all nice but I also wanted to upload a video where I was struggling a bit on Darius um, as you saw in my lane so, how do you fight with Darius? There's really two objectives that you have on Darius. First of all, well, I mean one objective really. It's the, the, the one big objective is getting your passive. You know, getting the full stacks of your passive. That's the whole objective that you have on Darius. If you're able to do that, you win the fight. You win the, the fight. So here I'm just telling my team to take the turret. For some reason, they're not taking the turret, both of them. They don't want to take the first turret for free. I yeah i was a bit tilted here but it's fine so okay how do you get your passive without dying in a team fight because that's the whole thing on darius right because i see a lot of people you know they get the they get the passive but then they're at 10 percent hp and they die because they took so much damage while trying to accumulate the stacks so let me tell you the first way this is the obvious way i like to say is um where you literally basic attack the same enemy five times in a row right and this is the second way hitting and killing an enemy with your ultimate so the second way is the pro way i like to call it the pro way and the first way is the baby way right you have the pro way and 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 the the, the beginner uh, the, the the way that's like not the best the reason that i'm saying that the first way is not the best because the first way you know basic attacking the same enemy five times in a row or hitting your first ability on them that's also possible it's just not gonna be good in a team fight guys obviously it's gonna be good in a 1v1 situation because you're 1v1 but in a team fight there is five players so for you to hit the same enemy five times in a row it's gonna be hard guys it's gonna be really hard so here my riven for some reason no not for some reason my riven was unable to to help me and that garen just flashed on me unfortunately so i was unable to get the double kill so yeah, hitting the same enemy five times in a row is going to be incredibly hard to do in a team fight. But that's why I said it's good to pick Darius against enemies that really can't escape from you, right? Enemies that are going to have a really hard time to escape from you. Because that way, you could actually hit them with five, five attacks in a row to get that, those stacks. But killing an enemy that is low with your ultimate, that's, that's as I said, that's the pro way. That is really the way that you can completely hard carry team fights with Darius because it's going to be unexpected that's the thing about it oh that was such a nice hook so that's that's the thing that you can do with the hook right you can use your third ability you can use your third ability and then flash right after you click on your third ability and you're gonna you're gonna immediately flash hook it's really really powerful like this is a good combo to catch out an enemy so killing an enemy with your ultimate, that's gonna that, that's pretty much gonna be your main objective in team fight. That's the main objective. So let's take a look what's gonna happen here. I just immediately go on the Alistar instead of the Kha'Zix, because the Alistar was a free target. Alistar is the type of champion that really can't do much against you when you catch him. Obviously he can push you away with his second ability, but he had already used it there, so I, I was like, yeah, sure, I'll just uh, hook him and kill him. <laughs> and I just hooked him over the walls on force the flash. That was so nice. So you can also hook enemies over the wall with the with Darius, right? <clears throat> so let me tell you about the nerf that Darius actually received because this is this kind of changed the playstyle of Darius. Um, this definitely made Darius weaker. Let me tell you. So they nerfed his first uh, no not they they nerfed his passive damage, the bleed damage. They nerfed it by a lot, guys. So it's not as reliable anymore. Uh, it's not as reliable reliable anymore. Jesus, I can't speak. So what's going to be more reliable for you is the burst damage that you have with your ultimate instead of the sustained damage of your bleed because they really nerfed it hard guys, especially in the early mid game. So keep in mind that you shouldn't really rely on your bleed damage anymore like before because before you would you would be able to get an enemy down to 10% HP and then your bleed damage would kill them off, right? Not anymore. As you saw like with the Orianna when I, when I used my ultimate on her, my bleed did not kill her. The old Darius would have definitely killed her, but this one, no. So, Darius is a bit harder to play than he used to be before. You really have to play around the passive now. This is like, this is really, really important because the passive gives you bonus attack damage, right? So really learn the two things that I told you earlier on in this video, which is either being able to hit the same enemy five times in a row in a team fight, or catching out an enemy that is really low HP and getting that kill. So let's take a look at this. 
Oh, I didn't use my ultimate. That was a mistake. I didn't use my ultimate there where I could have actually because an enemy was really low. I hooked two of them and the Kha'Zix was really low. I should have just finished them off with my ultimate. And you should always do that, by the way. Don't just finish the enemies off normally. Whenever you can, whenever you can, no exceptions, literally no exceptions, finish, uh, finish off the enemy with your ultimate. So here I was going on the Garen because I wanted to bait him because I had a barrier, right? Like he thinks he can kill me, I have a barrier. Boom. But he still he had a Sterex gauge. So the mistake that I did here is I actually didn't look at his build. He just bought a Sterex gauge on his build. And obviously he's gonna win the 1v1 with the Sterex gauge because um in that situation at least. Because it's gonna give him bonus health. So man, this is a thing that, like I'm gonna teach you guys a thing that's very important and that I make a lot of mistakes in. You should actually really pay attention to the enemy's builds. Not only their builds. But also their spells, their summoner spells, right? You know how often I had it when I was like in a 1v1 situation against an enemy and I just flash, use all my abilities to dive the enemy and then they just end up using a barrier and I die because of it? Do you know how often that happens? So this is a very important general tip that I have for you guys. Just bef before you really get into your lane, just quickly look at what summoner spell your enemy laner has, right? When you're playing Baron lane, just quickly check, okay, does the Garen have a barrier? Does he have a ghost? Does he have a ignite? Check what he has, guys, so you know what you can expect. So the enemy doesn't just unexpectedly kill you with a stupid ignite, for example. This is so important, guys. I, I forget it myself. That's why I'm really telling you guys that it's important, because I know how important it is. I've died many times because of this. <laughs> like, where I just didn't know the enemy had a barrier and I would just go for a stupid uh, trade because I would think that I could kill him. But no, they just use a barrier and I die. So just check if the enemy, uh, what summoner spell the enemy has. So here they're actually fighting. So instead of pushing my lane, I actually chose to join the fight. But that was pretty stupid. I'm not in a good situation. But the Alistar is like, you know man, you know what? I'll, I'll give you a second chance. The Alistar was like, I'll give you a second chance. It's fine. Oh my god, that Garen. Again, the stupid Styrox Gauge, man. Like, that Styrox Gauge was killing me. Again, I just didn't respect his build. And I thought by myself that he had already used the Styrox Gauge in a team fight. But no, he just had it again. And, ah, the item knowledge is important, guys. If I had checked the cooldown of the Styrox Gauge, or if I had just had known it, I would have known by now that he would have it again. And I wouldn't go for that hook on the Garen and try to kill him. These are the small little things, but they're really going to be able to, like, if you learn things like this, they're really going to set you apart from the good players and the amazing players. If you want to become an amazing player, you should know these things as well, and not only just the basic things. One second, let me just drink some water, guys. On my way. Enemy turret destroyed. Yeah. Cool. Alright, so I just have so many Darius videos and I don't want to repeat what I said in my older Darius videos. You should really check out my channel, guys. You should check out my Darius videos especially. Because Darius is my main cha main champion, right? Uh, I mean main champion. I play pretty much every single champion, but I've played Darius the most because I find him really fun. So all you have to do is just look up Hell's Devil Darius and you'll find like, what, like 10 Darius videos or something. So... And if you haven't watched them already, you should really watch them. As I said, those are some videos where I got like Penta kills, Quadra kills, things like that. Oh, I go on him. I actually flashed. And this, okay. Test your knowledge. Was this smart or not? Was it worth for me to literally flash over the wall into my demise and death just to be able to kill the Kha'Zix? Was it worth? Yes or no? And why? Tell me. Look at everything. I'm not going to give you any more tips. Just look at the scenario and tell me. Was this worth it or not? Look at my score. You know how strong I am right now. Look at Just look at everything. Put it in the comments. Also, I'm doing a 15 skin giveaway. So uh, all you got to do to enter is put down a comment. But yeah, pause the video. I'm going to unpause it now and tell you if it was worth it or not. And the answer is yes, it was worth it. So... The reason that it was worth it, I immediately said yes, is so we're 15 minutes into the game and the death timers are at like 40 seconds. So me killing the Kha'Zix, like look at his death timer, look at how big it is. And the dragon is spawning very soon. The Baron is up. 
my team can just get a free dragon. They can literally just get a free dragon. And if they kill another enemy, they could have gotten free Baron as well. Take a look at this. The enemy Kha'Zix is not even up. Even though I kind of wasted my flash on it because I flashed to kill him. We kill or I killed the Kha'Zix, so they just can't steal the dragon. Definitely worth it. So they, I didn't just kill the Kha'Zix, I basically got the dragon for my team right there. As you can see, totally, totally worth it. And now we have three dragons. We literally have three dragons. And these are the things, these are the big brain plays that you should also be looking at in your map. So there I immediately was like, yeah, I need to kill this Kha'Zix. So I hooked him over the wall. And when he jumped over, I just, without hesitating, I immediately went after him. Because I knew, okay, we're 15 minutes into the game. There is, uh, the dragon is spawning. The Baron is already up. It's definitely gonna be worth it for me to, to kill the Kha'Zix, even if I die for it. Definitely. And yes, it was worth it. So you have to be looking at the map as well. Don't just be like a brain dead player who just wants to get kills and just runs around the map. Actually look at the map and then make your decisions on what to do. Like here, I'm looking at the map. I saw four enemies. I thought that they were going to the bot lane, but then I saw them coming to the top lane, but I still get the turret. Here you can see them coming and the turret is dead. What am I doing? I'm not actually teleporting home, I'm teleporting to my teammate instead, easy, because if I had teleported home, first of all, it would have taken longer, secondly, I would have taken damage from the Orianna, which would have stopped my teleport, so I got the turret and I teleported to my team, was it worth my teleport? Meh, yes, it was worth it actually, but not, not amazing. The reason that I actually went for the third is I thought that they were going bot lane, but then they immediately turned, like all of them turned to me because they thought that I was a free kill, right? So that's when I decided, okay, I have to teleport away with my teleport. So here I ping my team to start the Baron because we saw the Kha'Zix at the bot side of the map, but it seems like, yeah, okay, now my team is coming, but the Kha'Zix is right there. Hmm. So I stop the Baron immediately. I go on the Alistar. Look at this. Just look. I have my stacks already. He used his ultimate, but who cares about his ultimate? Oh no, that flash though. Not the most amazing. And here he had another kill. He was low, so I killed him with my ultimate. So you saw, I went on the Alistar without any hesitation. Yet again, these are, like, these are the things that I just unconsciously do. Let me tell you why. I already told you why early on in this video. Basically, Alistar can't escape. <laughs> Alistar cannot escape. Also, Alistar, Alistar can't do anything against my ultimate. That's the thing. She just can't do anything against my ultimate. Or he. Is Alistar a dude or a girl? Shut down. Is Alistar a dude? Hey, I never thought about that. Enemy turret destroyed. Alistar. Enemy I think it's definitely destroyed. a dude, right? Is it a dude? Ace. Yeah, it's a dude because it's a bull. Of course, it's a dude. What the? If it was, if it was a, if it was a girl, it would have looked like a cow. But it has a cow skin. What? Oh, the cow skin is like a, it's like a dude in disguise. Ah, I get it. Okay, Alistar is definitely a dude, guys. It's, it's a dude. Yeah. But why does it have a cow skin? Yeah, okay, well, thank you very much for watching. Let's take a look at how much damage everyone did and uh, what rating I got. I got a, a rating. Oh, by the way, Emerald won that because the season literally reset one hour ago. So yeah, here you can see I did quite a lot of damage, but my team also did pretty well. So thank you guys very much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. And uh, yeah, again, uh, follow me on this, uh, this stupid platform, TikTok. What am I doing? Jesus Christ, man. But yeah, thank you for watching and I will see you all in the next Wild Drift video. Bye-bye.